All right, not a bad way to wrap up the holiday weekend. No, it's been a wonderful three-day weekend. A lot of folks off work and enjoying the, the great outdoors here in Austin. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Alona. Time now to go overseas to some brand new developments in Israel to tell you about where an American teenager was brutally beaten and then imprisoned by Israeli troops. The country's officials say that the boy attacked and officers resisted arrest. He was resisting arrest and officers had to restrain him. He was protesting his Palestinian cousin's murder. ABC's Alex Marquardt has the latest now from Jerusalem. 15-year-old American Tarek Abu Khader appearing in front of a judge in an Israeli court today, released after being held without charges since Thursday. It is the unrelenting brutality of this video that is sending shockwaves around the world. As one Israeli policeman pins a young teen down, another repeatedly stomps on the boy's head, then kneels down to keep punching. His family immediately said the victim was Tarek, a rising sophomore born and raised in Tampa, Florida. This is what he looked like afterwards. Tarek was on summer vacation with his parents, visiting their family in Jerusalem. When we sat down with them, they were stunned and outraged. Palestinians live like this every day. They kind of say, okay, we'll deal with it. But us as Americans, we, it's just, it's not h human. It was Tarek's cousin, 16-year-old Mohammed Abu Khader, who was killed on Wednesday after he was abducted and set on fire, believed to have been carried out by Israelis looking for revenge for the recent murders of three Jewish teens. An Israeli police spokesman told ABC News this morning that Tarek was part of a group of masked teens in the violent clashes that followed. He said they resisted arrest and attacked the police, who call this video edited and biased. Tarek's parents say he was playing with cousins at the wrong place at the wrong time. What would you say to the police officers who, who beat your son, if you could speak Why? to him? Why? Why? Why couldn't you just walk him there? Why did you have to brutally beat him to uh, almost to death? So far, there has been no punishment for the policeman in the video. Israel's Justice Department said this morning they've launched an investigation. As for the conditions of Tarek's release, they will apply until the family leaves Jerusalem on the 16th. Alex Marquardt, ABC News, Jerusalem. Thanks to the quick actions of a store clerk in Arizona, a missing baby is now home with her family. Karen Akins was working the cash register at a gas station last Wednesday when 57-year-old Carolyn Ferguson came in with a small baby. Atkins says that Ferguson was acting very strangely with the infant, so she called 911. Little did she know, 300 miles away in Huntington Beach, California, an Amber Alert had been issued earlier that day for the baby, six-month-old Leilani Mosley. The child was last seen with her grandmother, Carolyn Ferguson, who, according to court documents, is bipolar and does not take her medication. It's a mom thing. I just... If it wasn't her baby, it would kill me if I let her walk out that door and know later on that it wasn't hers and I could have done something at that moment. Atkins was able to keep Ferguson distracted until police arrived and then placed her under arrest. Ferguson is currently being held in Arizona on $50,000 bail. She's been booked on charges of child endangerment, abuse, and also custodial interference. The border crisis continues to heat up. Thousands of children making the dangerous journey alone to the U.S. One mom is waiting for her daughter to make it, but she doesn't know where she is or how to find her. She claims she had constant contact with her four-year-old before she got to the Texas border. As Deborah Wrigley reports, the mother is now growing worried for her daughter's safety. Her name is Eliana. She is four years old and her mother doesn't know where she is. She says that it's very difficult being um, away from, from your child and that's why she, um, she took the risk of bringing her over here. Gladys Lopez's only child was smuggled from Honduras to the U.S. border along with her 17-year-old sister and niece. Lopez has been in Houston for a year saving money that she paid to bring her daughter and her family here. Um, and for a better life and also fleeing from the violence that uh, her country, uh, her home country of Honduras is now facing. Eliana and the others made it across the border and were taken into ICE custody in Brownsville on June 18th. Lopez got a call from immigration that day but has heard nothing since, which means her daughter could be far from here. Unfortunately, it's, it's common practice for ICE to transfer people and not let relatives know. Um, so at this point, they could be in the detention center as far away as New York where one of the child detention centers are. Lopez is being joined to intersearch by a local immigrant rights group attempting to locate her daughter. 
Like so many who've crossed the border illegally, she was hoping for amnesty. Her priority, she says, has changed. She said that she wouldn't do this again because it's very difficult to not know uh, where her daughter is at this moment. That was Deborah Wrigley reporting. As state and the federal government are both having trouble tackling the serious issue, some cities are taking the matter into their own hands. League City near Houston plans to vote on a resolution tomorrow that would ban undocumented immigrant children from being sheltered or transported anywhere inside that city. The resolution claims those activities would compromise the city's finances and its citizens' personal safety and health. Residents tell us they are split on that issue. If they're here illegally, you know, I think they should go back, like, plain and simple. I don't know that the children themselves are the ones that should have to be judged based on the fact that they're their parents or whatever. I just, I just think kids, kids are kids. Supporters of the ban say they fear thousands more children are on their way. Many of those children are sent by their parents to avoid gangs and violence and death in their home countries, many in Central America. Well, the highly anticipated Barton Springs Improvement Project is finally completed here in Austin. Coming up, we will tell you how the city plans to celebrate and how you can get involved in it. Plus, more and more celebrities are targeted by hackers, but they're not the only ones that should be worried. See what you can do to help keep your online information from being compromised. Here's a live look outside this morning. Looks like the fog's getting better as we speak. This is the, our tech stock camera near Gaines Ranch Road. We'll be right back.